Jimmy Haslam, you got to look at it from uh, respectability, culpability, and announceability, and stubbornability. You had a quarterback that was on a fucking collision course for greatness when you drafted him. Out of the gate, he just was on fire. Ran a regular, regular, regular run an NFL offense. And then you hired Hugh Jackson. Or, or no, I'm sorry. And then you hired Freddie Kitchens. And we know what happened then. But still, second season, NFL figures out quarterbacks. That season was better than anything Kevin Stefanski could do in Cleveland. Last year, outstanding. Mayfield had a decent year, 26-8. Wasn't bad. Second half was great. But here's the problem. That's over with. Defenses have figured out Kevin Stefanski's six-play playbook. You have to look at what you have and your quarterback and your head coach. Are you going to be able to find a quarterback as good as Baker Mayfield for next year? And if you can't do that, then you have to keep Baker Mayfield and you have to release Kevin Stefanski. And I'll tell you the reasons why you release Kevin Stefanski. Look at the morale on your offensive side of the ball. You go pull. I want you to call each and every offensive player into the fucking uh, into your office and ask them. If one of them had to go, who would it be, Baker or uh, Stefanski? Leave it at that. And whoever wants, whoever has more votes, you fire that guy. If it's Mayfield, get rid of him. But I'm willing to bet you 98% of the players would want Stefanski gone. The morale on that side of the ball is it's over. They're running a, them players know they're running a high school offense. They don't have a chance to succeed. In. What do you think? Odell Beckham knew that. Stephon Diggs knew that. The track record speaks for itself. This guy has no conceptual ability to make NFL off. He doesn't. He, he just can't. Look at the game plan. Look at the final minute of last week's game against the uh, Ravens. 85 yards to go, one minute, no timeouts. What's he come out in? 13 personnel. One, to, one wide receiver, that's Jarvis Landry, he runs a curl. Runs a fucking curl. We don't even try to stretch the field. Everything's congested in front of him. Nothing can be completed. Mayfield threw two darts, dimes to the fucking receivers, and they dropped them. It was just inevitable. It was just delaying inevitable. We weren't going to go down the field with that fucking 13 personnel. And then he has a running back that didn't touch the ball all game, didn't even play all game, in at the final. It doesn't make any sense. The guy is clueless. He's trying to figure out. It's like a video game to him calling plays. He enjoys it. It's fun to him. Well, guess what? What's fun to him is miserable for the rest of the team. He's killing the team. He knows it because he accepts culpability with this horrible play calling. And he's got to go. He has to go. He has to go. His ego and stubbornness has cost you the season. We should be 9-3. and three. As bad as he coached this year, we would easily be 9-3. and three. If he didn't coach the Pittsburgh Steelers game, if he didn't coach the Charger game, and if he didn't coach the Ravens game, we'd be 9-3. and three. He holds our offense into a 20-yard box. He doesn't stretch the field. He doesn't even attempt to. And he gives up on the run too fast. The guy's just clueless. So, Jimmy, call your players in the locker room or in your office and, and ask them. Hell, even ask the defensive players. It don't matter. But I'm guaranteeing you 99% of the players want Mayfield over Stefanski. That year, last year, COVID, that's all it was, COVID. And it's no coincidence that last year we went into the playoffs against Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. You know what would have happened if Kevin Stefanski didn't have COVID? We would have got ran out of there 38-7. to I mean, hell, they rested their fucking starters on the final game of the season. We needed the win to get in the playoffs, and he barely beat them. It took a miraculous uh, scramble by Baker Mayfield to get that win. And then he goes and gets COVID, and look what happens. We fucking destroy him. And then he comes back the next week, and your offense looks like shit against the worst defense, KC. Go watch the final eight minutes of that game, and you tell me that's a guy that can call plays any time of the game, let alone crunch time. Can't do it. And he's killing the team. And I don't want you to demote him. I want him fired for the simple fact that his ego has ruined a professional business. His ego, you allowed his ego to ruin your million-dollar company. $500 million company, and you allowed a jackass with an ego, a petulant child, to control it. And this is on you for not making the move earlier. You should have demanded he don't call plays. What does he do on game day? He doesn't know how to make adjustments. He does nothing. This is on you, Jimmy, because you allowed him to stay calling plays. You should have told Andrew Barry, you don't want him calling plays? Get him out of there. Because he's the reason we're 6-6 six and six right now with this roster. We got a defense right now that can play with anybody in the league. And, and here's the problem. You got to get rid of Depot Tester, too, because this defense that can play with anybody in the league, it took them eight weeks to figure out how to play. And it's no coincidence that they played the Bengals and dominated Joe Burrow. They put pressure on him. As soon as they started putting pressure on him, Joe Burrow folded. 
And they were having fun that day. You seen it on the field. They were having fun. Then the next week, we go to New England, and we sit back and relax. We're going to make them go 13 plays and hope they make a mistake against a rookie quarterback, against Bill Belichick. You think a Bill Belichick team's going to feed in your hands? you got to put pressure on the rookie. And we didn't do that. And it showed by the way they played. They didn't even care. They were out there lack of days ago. When they have fun and blitzing and putting pressure on the quarterback and play the way this defense is meant to, they can play with anybody in the league. And they have fun, and that's what they should have been doing all year. And if we did that all year, we'd be better than nine and three. So, Jimmy, you got some. You got to get rid of uh, De Potesta and Stefanski. Um, outside of this cat coming off this bye week, and our offense taking off again like an NFL offense should be, if we run a regular NFL offense and we go five and zero and win the Super Bowl, then I'll say he learned his lesson. You can keep him, but I don't see that happening. Neither do you. So, after this season, you have to make a decision: either the quarterback. Or the head coach. And I'll guarantee you, I don't care which one. Is, no, I, I I want you to get rid of the head coach. In fact, I don't even care if you want to get rid of Mayfield, too. That doesn't bother me. As long as you get – because if you bring another quarterback in here with this guy head coaching, it's going to be the same thing. Nothing is going to change. This guy doesn't know how to handle quarterbacks. I mean, look at uh, Zach Taylor. He handles Burrow perfectly. Look at – um, who's the other guy? Look at um Carson Wentz. He sucked last year. Look at him now with Frank Reich. That's what coaches do. You hired a guy that brought his high school melancholic offense to Cleveland and forced it on his players. He forced this system on his players. What type of coach says, we're going to run my high school offense whether you like it or not? i will guarantee if you ran an NFL offense, Odell Beckham, as much as he hated Cleveland, he'd still be here. But you don't run an NFL offense. He chased away Stephon Diggs with his high school offense. Now, either he has a severe ego problem or he's just inept. I think it's a little bit of both. He has no ability. This guy needs fired. I don't care what these announcers say. Oh, he eleven and five last year. He brought him. Out. He didn't do that. That was Baker Mayfield's play. If the quarterback didn't play good, we weren't eleven and five last year. You know it as well as I do. That was all Baker Mayfield. For some reason, Stefanski's play calling last year was a lot better. But then again, defense has figured out his seven play offense, and now them seven plays ain't working no more. And he has no no other way around it. He doesn't know how to. He doesn't know how to adapt and adjust. So. The players don't like him. You can see that. The, the morale on the offense is so low. I've never seen a morale so low. And I know people with other, people say, oh, Mayfield. It's all Mayfield. You think them players actually think Mayfield's a problem? When you play football, you know the problem. That coach has killed the morale with the offensive system he runs. It's horrendous. I don't care if you run the ball 80 times a game as long as we win. But he gives up. Look at the New England game. We were 7-7. He gave up on the run that fast. Dearness Johnson was slashing him, whatever. He was gushing him. And we gave up on the run that fast. Oh, we couldn't run. What are you telling me? And then last year against the Jets, all four receivers down. And what's he do? Throws the ball 70 fucking times. And then why is uh, Rashard Higgins a, a scratch every week? Mayfield and him have a connection that no other receiver and him have a connection with. I want you to harken back to Mayfield's rookie year. He made Rashard Perriman. He made Antonio Callaway. You know why? Because they had, uh, not Bruce, they had, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ken Zampisi. Maybe you ought to think about hiring him back. You remember that? He was throwing guys wide open. He looked like a beast. He made them guys respectable. That's the And you think that guy disappeared? Now, he is injured, but still, that guy's still there. You know what it is? This head coach turned him into a game manager so he can force his offense on these guys so he can get the credit. He wants to be the next Belichick. If we win, it's all because of my system, my run system. Well, guess what? Look at Kyle Shanahan. It didn't work in San Francisco. It ain't working. You got to be able to stretch the field in this league. This guy's running. This guy's. I can't emphasize this. No, Jimmy, you have to get rid of him. That guy, that rookie year, that made Callaway and Brashard Perriman, he's still in the building. He's still there. He's just waiting to be able to play football like he's meant to play, like every other quarterback's meant to play. You bring in Aaron Rodgers in this system right now, it's the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. Everything underneath. That's it. The guy has no conceptual concepts of how to stretch a fucking field. I know the problem, and I think you deep down know the problem. And I think you're hesitant to pull the trigger. I think you want to pull the trigger, but you're thinking about these outsiders say, no, when you have a press conference, you say, listen, we have we we paid all this money. We got great players offensively and defensively, and analytics is not working out. And I expect more out of my offense. I don't expect 14 points, seven straight games. <laughs> this guy's NFL offense is averaging 14 points. What's that tell you? They figured him out. They figured him out, Jimmy. They know what he's doing at all fucking turns, and he can't figure it out. You have no choice. You gave him two years with a stacked roster. It's time. Move on. 
Mayfield didn't forget how to play football. In fact, all these coaching changes, the fact that he still is a starter in this league is actually kind of it's actually kind of impressive to me. The guy is from one system to another to another and then to this garbage ass high school concept. It's just it's embarrassing. And what type of player in his fourth year is not allowed to go to the line of scrimmage and look at the defense and say, I'm getting out of this play. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this route. I'm gonna do this route. Well, what, the guy's not allowed to do that. He's allowed to check into a, a run play. That's it. I mean, this guy, he's got everything stacked against him. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, Jimmy. If you do move on from Mayfield, and that's fine. Like I say, if you get it, but you can't have Stefanski here. If you want to make a clean break from both of them, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. He's going to end up somewhere else. And you watch. He's going to be a fucking superstar. And we're going to still be trying to find a quarterback. As long as we got a quarterback, I don't care what he does. But I think it'd be pretty funny if he went to Pittsburgh and stuck it to us all the time. And I know fans are going to say, he can't do that. No way. Oh, yeah. Ask the Cincinnati Bengals how they like Baker Mayfield. Ask him. Ask him. Every fucking year he destroys him, except for that year when I had COVID, 2019. For some reason, they won that one game. Oh, Freddie Kitch was here. But, um, yeah, ask Cincinnati Bengals how they feel about Baker Mayfield. Ball's in your court, Jimmy. If we lose to Baltimore and it's the offense's fault, you have no choice but to fire this clown. You want to get rid of him without paying him the rest of his contract? Take away play calling duties. Come out in a press conference and say, it's horrible. It's, over. it's the worst offense I've ever seen. He'll quit. He'll resign. As stubborn as he is, it's like a little child with a ball. If you take away his ball, his play calling, he'll quit. Trust me. He'll, stay, he'll go pout. If you want to get rid of him, that's what you got to do. And then you won't have to pay him the rest of his contract because he quit. Because right now, we're spinning tires with this guy. Everybody else is getting better but us. Because of the guy you hired. And the guy you hired was only hired because Paul D. Potesta, Mr. Analytics wanted them. Mr. Analytics wanted them. Mr. Analytics said Carson Wentz was not a viable quarterback in this league long term. Well, guess what? Carson Wentz would look great right now, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he? Big arm, big guy. Yeah. Yeah, he would. Paul D. Potesta told you he's not a viable quarterback in this league. Paul D. Potesta told you analytics is the way to go. Paul D. Potesta told you Kevin Stefanski is the way to go. And now we're paying for it. <sighs> Make a clean break, Jimmy. You know, and, and, and I, my offer still stands. I'll coach this team for free. I'll coach it for free, and I'll guarantee you the first year I will win a Super Bowl. I guarantee you that. I guarantee it. 